Hey Book Club. We are making a caprina, and very fortunately, oh, look at that. The instructions were on the bot. Oh, I also need some ice. All right, let's do it. And then my phone didn't have any space and just, it was black. The whole video was black. So I'm not already half done my drink. I've been filming for 20 minutes and I'll have to start again. The drink is better at the end than it was at the beginning. All the lime and the sugar was at the bottom. Today we're going to talk about two different books. The Boyfriend Project by Farah Roshan and The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. So there are a few reasons why I'm comparing these two books. One of which is that they're both by black female authors and the main character, the female main character, is black in both of these books. They both also deal with a lot of similar issues, which was interesting and very unintentional when I was reading them. And I was reading them at the same time. So The Boyfriend Project actually of the two has a way better opening. It is so interesting. Basically, Samaya is getting ready for a date that she has with a guy she's been seeing for a few weeks. He had to work late, so they didn't make their sushi reservation, but they're gonna meet at a club later. Her sister's at her place with her and reading a live tweeted date. As the sister is reading this stuff, Samaya realizes that her boyfriend of a couple weeks took another girl to the sushi restaurant she had been on hold for half an hour for to get a reservation. So she goes to the restaurant along with a third woman and the three of them, instead of getting mad at each other, lose it on him, somebody takes a video, they go viral and they also become best friends. It's so interesting, it's so funny. Their friendship throughout the novel was pretty solid. Like I really liked how the three of them were written talking to each other. For the worst best man, I didn't love the opening. It's a prologue. I don't like prologues. If it's important, it should be chapter one. But there is a prologue, which is Lena in her wedding dress, getting ready to go out there and waltz her way up to the altar when the best man, Max, knocks on the door and tells her, sorry, my brother doesn't want to marry you. And also, he sent me a text to ask me to tell you because apparently when we were drunk last night, I talked him out of marrying you. It was interesting, I guess, but it didn't really get me right into it like the boyfriend project did. After this point, total flip. If you had asked me after the first chapter in the prologue which book would be better, I would have said the boyfriend project, hands down. But there was a lot of stuff that I felt was missing from the boyfriend project. If you want to hear my spoiler free review, please go to this timestamp and that's where it will be. Everything after this is spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. And drinky, drinky, drinky. Both of these books are dual perspective, but The Worst Best Man is dual first person and The Boyfriend Project is third person. I actually like dual first person in audiobooks because then usually you have a male reader and a female reader. I do prefer two different readers. So the meet cute for The Boyfriend Project, which is really a co-workers, friends to lovers romance, happens at work. Samaya bumps into Daniel in the hallway and little does Samaya know, but Daniel's not just the new guy, he's actually an undercover agent looking for a money laundering ring or something like that. The meet cute for the worst best man. <laughs> Lena gets this job opportunity. She's super excited about it. She walks in and the people she has to work with are Max and her ex-fiance, Andrew. And she pretends to not know them and they just roll with it. Oh my God, all the sugar is at the bottom. No wonder the bottom is better. Was I supposed to shake it? Just wanna like, oh yeah, it's all sugar. The getting to know you part is kind of where I fell off with the boyfriend project. Like even through the meet cute, I was okay with it. I didn't love it. Samaya and Daniel really like each other. And unfortunately, I didn't feel it. They go out to lunch once and they discover that they both enjoy hiking. So Samaya offers to take him on some trails that she knows about, but then immediately walks him back because she doesn't know him well enough to be alone with him yet. Maybe this is just me as a six foot one female who's taller than most people. But if you're out to lunch with someone, 
and you're not comfortable going for a hike in a public park or wherever, like I get that there's not going to be somebody beside you, but there will be people who will hear you scream. If you're not comfortable with that, do not go out with this man ever. Trust your instinct. So that kind of bugged me. I felt like she was so, so guarded and maybe that's just a me thing. I don't know, but she wanted to go on more lunches with Daniel before she was going to be alone with him, which to me was a little odd. So they end up having a few lunches, going hiking together, and that's kind of their getting to know you. They work together and whatever. For Lena and Max, I really found it so endearing. Like Lena is so upset at him because she is blaming him for the end of her potential marriage. And so she takes him out to a Brazilian restaurant and tricks him into ordering something super spicy. She takes him out with a client to test cakes because she knows the client is gonna want him to taste test so many different things. And Max overeats and feels super bloated and lethargic and it's really cute and funny. And then she takes him to see her family because she's organizing her cousin's wedding and Max wants to see her in action to help with their pitch for this new job for her and this new potential job for him. The family grills him and he ends up giving just wonderful answers that so endear me to him. The next kind of beat I think is in most romance novels is like the first fill in the blank, their first kiss, their first time, their first whatever. And they've had a few like almost or maybes before this happened, but their first time for Daniel and Samaya was at work. They are making out at work. And one thing that it might have been the reader, it felt like somebody was reading me a textbook and then suddenly started talking about how hard her nipples were. And I'm like, girl, I that's never once in my life have I ever thought, oh yeah, those puppies are hard as diamonds right now. Like that's just, not, I hate, I actually hate when romance authors are like, and I felt my nipples harden. That's not real life. Yo, if there are any women watching, legit, like maybe not in the comments, but you can message me on Instagram if that's real life for you. So I found like the kind of textbook style writing almost, or maybe just the reader, maybe it was the reading. And then a very quick switch to like very sexual stuff was jarring and I, it wasn't, it didn't get me going. Lena and Max, on the other hand, were like fireworks. Their stuff was great. And I think one of the biggest differences between The Worst Best Man and The Boyfriend Project is how they discussed consent and how they discussed vulnerability leaning up to the first time moment. There is a conversation between Daniel and Samaya on a hike where Samaya talks about being a black woman and how she feels she has to be perfect because she is going to be not only judged so harshly because she is potentially the first black woman working in this situation, but she's also representing every black woman that follows her. And this is really, really real. And I totally understand that. The same conversation happens in The Worst Best Man. Max and Lena are going to see a wedding venue and Lena's car breaks down. They're in the middle of nowhere. They can't get back to the city and they need a place to stay. And at this wedding venue, the only way they can get a room is if they pretend they're a couple and join the couple's retreat. Cliche or whatever, I don't care, I loved it. So they're in this talking circle and one of the things that Max says to Lena is I wish you would open up to me more. And Lena then says, you don't know what you're asking. Asking. As an Afro Latinx woman, you don't know the stereotypes I have to battle against and what you're asking by saying you want me to be more emotional or you want me to open up. If I'm upset, I'm an angry black woman. And if I'm emotional, I'm a fiery Latin woman. And there's there's so many negative connotations with those emotions and those races. I felt like in the Boyfriend Project, I was really getting beaten over the head with that. And in The Worst Best Man, I was actually a part of a, a natural conversation. I think also Max had a lot of vulnerabilities and I didn't feel like Daniel showed a lot of vulnerabilities. Daniel did talk a bit about past relationships, but it just, it doesn't stick in my mind. Whereas Max, a past girlfriend left him and told him, I wish I had met your brother first. So now that he's dating his brother's ex or is hoping to date his brother's ex at this point in the novel, like right before the first whatever, he is really in his head and, and stressed about it. And he is throughout the rest of the novel. And I feel like that kind of vulnerability that we met along the way in The Worst Best Man made me root for the couple more and that didn't really happen in The Boyfriend Project. The other thing that The Worst Best Man did much better than The Boyfriend Project was talk about consent or deal with consent. I actually really debated which scene to read you. I'm gonna read you a bit. That's gonna be the lead up, the consent portion of the lead up to the first time for Daniel and Samaya and then the consent portion that's the lead up to the first time for Lena and Max. So for the boyfriend project, 
Yeah. They shoved the rest of their clothes off and worked as a team to roll on the condom he'd taken from his wallet. Stupid question time, Daniel said, as he braced his hands on either side of her head. Are you sure about this? That is a stupid question. The stupidest question ever. I know, but I still have to hear you say it, he said. Yes, Samaya shouted. Yes, please. And then she continues with some interesting language. Okay. If you're making out and taking each other's clothes off, to me, that's consent until somebody says something. Stupid question time. Are you sure about this? That is a stupid question. Okay. Again, consent asked, given. I know, but I still have to hear you say it. So three times. Oh, also, I forgot. She rolled the condom on his dick. Yo, if that's not consent. So in this one paragraph, these four lines, he gets consent four times and none of those times is sexy. Again, like this is my, my life experiences, my situations and totally fine if people disagree. In the worst best man, their sharing circle at the couple's retreat was to say like three things you wish your partner did or did more of, three things you wish your partner didn't do or did less of. And at one point, Max says to her, I wish I could kiss you. I wish I could touch you. I wish I could. He shakes his head and peers at me. No, you're not ready. I immediately press him for more. That's sexy consent. I feel like there's just, there's a way of writing sexy consent and there's a way of writing boring consent. And sexy consent can be as simple as, can I? Or, is this okay? Or do you like this? It doesn't have to be, I need to hear you explicitly say yes right now. And maybe there are a lot of people who are in their relationships who feel like that's the kind of consent they need to receive and give. That's the conversations they have to have. Nothing against that. It doesn't get me going in a romance novel. Unfortunately, this habit of repeating herself is something that happens in the boyfriend project a lot. If the author only repeated herself once, the book would be half as short. So Daniel is an undercover agent working at this tech company and Samaya has access to the room he needs via a key card. He copies her card, uses it and makes the bust. And this is the confrontation. This is the thing Samaya cannot forgive because he lied to her because he didn't tell her who he really was because he wasn't honest. And for me, I'm kind of like, yeah, bitch, he met you like four weeks ago. He's got a job to do. Why is he going to tell you this stuff? Like, sure, it wasn't cool, but what, what did you expect? What did you want him to do? Not his job? For me, it was an unrealistic expectation from Samaya of Daniel once she understood the full story. I definitely think that in the scene where Daniel is making the bust at the office, he sees Samaya, she doesn't understand what's going on yet, and he doesn't go over to her and explain. Get mad about that. But that he lied to you for a month and a half because he's a, an undercover agent? No, that's his job, you know? Like, don't get mad about that. The confrontation for Lena and Max, I actually really, really liked. Max broke things off because he was so insecure that he wasn't Lena's first choice and that his brother was always gonna be a level above him. Even though there was a point in that sharing circle at the couple's retreat where, where Lena says to him, you should not use your brother as a measure for success and she really tries to to teach him this and show him that this is how she feels about him that that they are not the same and Max isn't hearing any of it he's not comfortable he's super insecure and he breaks things off with her I want some more sugar All the sugar at the bottom is great. Legit might make another one after this, but I might make it more as like a blended drink. The resolution for both of these books, again, I really felt like the boyfriend project fell short. Daniel makes a super grand gesture. He flies across the country to come and talk to her and she doesn't give him the time of day, which I really didn't like. I think that if, if Samaya had been ignoring him, okay, he goes back to wherever he's from, fine. He flies across the country to apologize to you. Let him apologize. She doesn't even talk to him. He has to go to Taylor in London and like plead his case and then they basically trick her into talking to him. If you have to do that, this is not the girl for you. Daniel, love yourself. For Max and Lena, Max kind of comes to his own conclusion. He just realizes that, and I, I wrote down the line, it doesn't matter if I'm the first or the hundredth choice, if I'm the right choice, 
and I am. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps just reading that now. I just found that everything about the Max and Lena relationship was more natural. There was way more business conversation in the boyfriend project, which I didn't love. But like oddly, there was also business conversation in the worst best man, but it was done in such a way that I felt it was involved in the story. It was involved in the characters and I was getting to know them better through their conversations about how they were working together. And that was just, it was weaved seamlessly into the storyline. I'm going to do a little quick wrap up before I do my rating, because this is where I'm going to start the spoiler free spot. So if you want to skip the spoiler a free uh, recap. You can go to this timestamp. I felt like consent and chemistry in general was dealt with much better in The Worst Best Man than in The Boyfriend Project. I also felt like the discussions of being a woman of color in business was done better in The Worst Best Man, although I think the important conversation happened in both books. Like they, It was discussed in both books well. I just found that in The Worst Best Man it was weaved more seamlessly into the storyline as opposed to being preachy. In terms of the relationships in this book, I really love the relationships of the three women in The Boyfriend Project, and I really loved Lena's relationship with her cousin and her family in The Worst Best Man. I also really liked the relationship that Max and Andrew had with their mother, and I felt like it was illuminating to some of their character. And Max hearing Lena talk about being a woman in, in business made him think differently about how his mother acted and I really liked that. I thought that was done very well. In The Boyfriend Project, there was a lot of business talk and if you're into that stuff, that's cool. I'm not a STEM person, I'm, a, I'm more of a liberal arts kind of girl, so that I didn't really enjoy. And I felt that in The Worst Best Man, the talk of work kind of moved the story forward. The titles. I am a sucker for a good title. Like, man, titles are my life. I, I feel like sometimes I regret naming my book Magic Required because I don't know that it's the best title. My second one is Dominion Required, which I, I like more than the first one, but I don't even know. Titles stress me out. The Boyfriend Project, it's barely mentioned. Like, they talk about it a couple times, but it feels like they're forcing the title into the book. The Worst Best Man I thought was solid. That was a solid title. Didn't blow me out of the water, but it worked and I didn't feel like I was being hit over the head by it. In terms of the performance of the audiobook readers, the woman who read The Boyfriend Project was a little stiff. It was kind of like she was reading a textbook. The Worst Best Man had two readers. The female reader I thought was great. I really, really loved how she portrayed all the characters. The male reader was good with all the male voices and some of the female voices but his voice for Lena actually I didn't like it at all unfortunately in general both performances were okay that's not even true the boyfriend project sucked but overall the worst best man performances were were solid my final review I give unfortunately and I hate to do this I don't hate to do it I'm totally fine doing it I give the boyfriend project one Harry Potter lightning bolt out of five because it just it was a romance novel with bad chemistry and no romance. That's not doing it for me. And I give The Worst Best Man four Harry Potter lightning bolts out of five because it was great. Dudes who are watching this, if you're trying to read this book, read this book. I wanna end all of my book club videos with two questions. My first question is, what makes you fall in love with a character? And for me, with Max, when I started falling in love with him was right in the prologue, even though I hate prologues, because after he delivered this horrible news to Lena, instead of trying to scamper off and save himself, he said to her, what do you need? Do you need a hug, a shoulder to cry on? Like, what can I do? And that really endeared me to him. My second question is, when these characters were discussing being a woman of color in the workplace. What did that have you reflecting on differently in terms of your life, your experiences, how you view women of color in the workplace, if you are a woman of color in the workplace? I wanna hear a little bit about your experiences and how these stories might have helped you or changed your mind. And that's all, folks. As always, until next time, may the forest be with you, live long and prosper, and don't let the muggles get you. Somebody suggested I say booking out. I'm booking out. What do we think about that? Because I'm overbooked, right? And now I'm, I'm booking out. Booking out to get more boobs. <laughs>